Shalom, dear Mishkan David, Shalom Israel partners, and welcome, welcome to our weekly report. And this week we are dealing with the fourth Torah portion of the Bible. This is the Torah portion of Vaira, and it's dealing with the life of Abraham in the promised land. Actually, God's promise is coming into fulfillment when Sarah is conceiving a child. Abraham is having the laughter of his life when he's there in a, in a tent uh, after being circumcised three days before, suffering probably in great pain, you know, the age of 99, it's not easy. And yet he's rolling up uh, 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 the sides of his tent to four corners of the earth, waiting for some visitors, for people that he can serve, that he can take care of, because he says probably to himself, if I'm going to take care of other people, I'll forget my own troubles. And yes, God is sending three messengers, three angels into the tent of Abraham to announce first that Sarah is about to have a child, which is happening and Isaac is going to be born. Yes, he's also sending this messenger to help Abraham heal from the pains of the circumcision of this covenant that he made with, with a, a God, you know, Brit Mila. And also the one angel that his actually mission is to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Here also we see the love of Abraham for people when you're having a quarrel argument with God, trying to spare Sodom and Gomorrah, trying to find maybe some good in this awful place. Abraham is a man of people. Abraham is a father of many nations. And we see that. We see that when he fights and tries to convince God maybe to spare the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. We see that also with his compassion towards Lot when he decided in the last Torah portion to give him whatever choice he has to take the better land wherever he wants he could go. Abraham is an amazing person and we see the promise of God coming into fulfillment. Yitzhak is going to be born and we can see also the ultimate battle and struggle between the descendants of Isaac and Jacob, which is Israel and the Jewish people, and the descendants of Hagar and Ishmael, which are the Islamic people, the Muslim people. This disobedience, disrespect that Hagar is showing Sarah, even though Sarah allowed Abraham to have a child with Hagar, Hagar now is looking at Sarah, looking down at her lady boss, mocking her, saying, look at you, you are so barren and I have a child from this father of many nations. God punishes Hagar and her child because of her mocking to his chosen lady, Sarah. He gives Sarah a chance, a child. And this is the dissonance. This is the big problem that we carry until nowadays between the children of Hagar, Ishmael and Islam and the children of Isaac, Jacob, and the Jewish people. We suffer from that situation until nowadays in Israel, surrounded by Muslim people who disobey the word of God, disagree to his promise to the children of Sarah, to the children of Israel, Jews and Christians alike, coming down from this side of the tree. This disagreement, until it's going to be solved in the heavenly, Israel has to stand strong occupy the land, hold on against all the enemies until God is going to send his Messiah to redeem us from this situation, then all the nations of the world, yes, even the Muslims, will accept the word of God, will walk up to Jerusalem, to the mountain of the Lord, and turn it into a house of prayer to all the people of the earth. That's what we are praying for. That's what we're dealing now with the disagreement, politics around the world. Now in, in, in America, putting pressure over the Israeli prime minister to authorize opening a, a, a consulate in Jerusalem for the Palestinians. All these things are coming off the devil. They're demonic because we know who are the chosen people. We know what God promises. We know that all of us has to stand and accept the word of God for all of this to happen. And if in the end of the time, we are not going to do this in acceptance, some nations will have to pay the price, will have to stand against the wrath of God, will pay the toll of disagreement, of disrespect, and not hearing the word of God. 
Let's pray for unity. Let's pray for peace. Let's pray for people to understand that God chose his people, made his promise to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And if people will accept it, the faster they will, the closer we are going to get into our salvation to the time when God is going to send us his Messiah. Abraham stood many, many trials, nine trials before the tenth and the hardest one came when he has a mission to go and bound his son Isaac, named by his name in the Bible, go and sacrifice him to God. But God in the last minute spared his life because he understood Isaac's life. He understood that Abraham had an ultimate obedience and he deserves the blessing and he deserves that his descendants after him will inherit the entire promised land, not pieces of it, the entire land. And that's what we have to stay in agreement now. So let's meditate about this. Let's pray to God to have his will done and let's have a beautiful, beautiful Shabbat together. This is time for all of us to stand in this agreement and stand with the word of God. I love you a lot. And if you're not partners yet, partner with us because we're making a huge change and beautiful impact in Israel, fulfilling the promises of God.